All right, if you are watching, please grab a King James Bible. And the name of today's video is something that I'm really excited to share. It's called uh, Amazing Bible Dates. And if you watch this and you're not a believer in the, in the words of that book and not a believer in Jesus Christ, and you still don't believe after this, and you say, oh, that's just a coincidence, then I believe you're probably the person with the littlest amount of faith in the world. You probably have more faith in a false concept called evolution and a fairy tale like that than you do in God, which is just really sad. So this right here, this video should prove to you that that Bible is from God. Yeah, the words themselves were written down by men through God's inspiration. God was speaking through them. Okay, so what we're going to do, like I said, is we're going to go over amazing Bible dates. So, <clears throat> a little context here. In the Old Testament, it's a book of many different things. The start of mankind, the creation of mankind from God. The start and creation of God's people, known as Israel or the Jews. That all started from a man named Abraham. And obviously Adam was our, the father of all, the, the first created man. So like I said, it gives you a genealogy. And this genealogy will lead all the way up to Christ. And it gives you a really good idea, actually an exact idea, of how many years mankind has been on this earth. And it's not as long as a lot of people like to think. So if we go through that direct genealogy, what we do is we go from Adam all the way to Abraham. And we add up all of the years that the father had begotten the son. So from Adam to Seth and so on and so forth. And somewhere in between here is the flood. And we've got to remember that it goes from Noah to Shem. And that would be the lineage that goes all the way to Abraham. And Shem had begotten Arphaxad. And that was two years after that flood. So we've got to remember that extra two years to add. Plus, of all, plus all the years of how old the father was that had begotten the son in that genealogy. So when we add all this up, we go all the way from Adam to Abraham. It was 1,948 years. 1,948 years. 1948 from Adam to Abraham. And that is truly amazing because Abraham is the father of Israel. Abraham had begotten Isaac. And from there, that lineage led to Israel and the 12 tribes and all of the Jews today. So Abraham is the father of Israel, and he was born 1948 from Adam. And after Christ had been crucified, it wasn't that long after that, that Israel was just completely dispersed and no longer a nation. And But by God's will, in the year 1948 from Christ, remember 1948 from Adam was Abraham, in 1948... From Christ, Israel became a nation again. Who is the father of the Jews? Who is the father of Israel? Abraham. When was he born? 1948. From Adam. When was Israel remade a nation again? 1948. From Jesus. That is truly amazing, and that is not a coincidence. God does not work in coincidences. He works in absolute truths. So now if you go to the, the actual Jewish year, not the Gentile year, not the Gregorian calendar, and the Gregorian calendar is 1948. If you go by the Jewish calendar, it is the year 5,708. 1948 is the year 5708 on the Jewish calendar, so bear with me. <clears throat> so everything's amazing so far. If that didn't already get you thinking, now the 5,708th verse in the Torah, so those are the original scriptures, in which we have them all organized today in the King James Bible, the 5,708th verse in the Torah is Deuteronomy 30, verse 5, which prophesied Israel returning to their homeland. And in the year 5,708 on the Jewish calendar, they did just that. That prophecy was fulfilled on that year, which lines up with the 5,708th verse in the Bible. 
That's just truly amazing. Again, these are not coincidences. And I'm going to read this verse to you right now. So if you guys have your Bible, please go to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 5. Chapter 30, verse 5. And it says, And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Yes. 1948, that prophecy was f fulfilled, which again is the year 5708 on the Jewish calendar and is the 5708th verse in the Torah. This is not coincidence, my friends. So now what we're going to do is we're going to jump forward to the New Testament and we're going to hear a few things that Jesus had to say. Jesus spoke of this generation that was born in 1948 or to the Jews 5708. He called this generation the fig tree generation. And he said that this generation would see all the things that we're seeing in the world today. He was talking about the wars and, and the beginning of sorrows. He was talking about what's everything that's leading up to the end of times. And of course, he also described the end of the world and how everything would be. Now, when I say, and when the Bible says end of the world, it doesn't mean the end of everything. Everything's gone. Everything that was built up from sin after sin after sin, creating the condition that the world isn't today, that's going to be ended. See, we're going to have a seven-year period known as the tribulation slash great tribulation, three and a half years and three and a half years broken up. It's going to be complete political unrest. And the last three and a half years are going to be uh, have it's the wrath of God. There's going to be a lot of disasters happening on this earth. And of course, you have the Antichrist reigning. This is a man who's going to, to a lot of people, he's going to look like a hero. But he is not a hero. He's going to implement one world government. And he's going to do a thing where he's going to make people depend on the government so much that they're going to have to, they're going to be forced to take what's called the mark of the beast in their right hand or in their forehead. And this sounds a lot like a microchip to me, the way things are being put together. Elon Musk is doing all this crazy stuff with Neuralink. Best piece of advice is never have anybody tattoo or put anything in your forehead or your right hand ever, ever, because you will go to hell if it's the mark of the beast. It makes that very clear. So Jesus Christ is talking about the last days in Matthew 24, 32 through 34, he's talking about the fig tree generation that was born in 1948. So we're going to jump forward. So we're going to go to Matthew 24, <clears throat> starting at verse 32. It says, now learn a parable of the fig tree. And he's talking about this generation right here. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. What things? The tribulation that's about to fall on this earth. The wrath of God. It's also called the time of Jacob's trouble. It's for the Jews. It isn't for saved Christians. Saved Christians will not be here. Who will be here? The Gentiles who are not saved. And the Jews will be here. But the Christian church will not be here. Jesus Christ spoke about this, and he said, this generation shall not pass. Now, we've got to get an idea of what a generation is. How long is a generation? Well, the Bible gives us that answer. We're going to go back to the Old Testament in Psalms 90, verse 10. Psalms 90, verse 10. It says, the days of our years are three score years and ten. That would be 70. And if by reason of strength they be four score years... Yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. So this saying 70 to 80 years is the generation of men. A score would be 20. So it says four score, score that means 80 years. So this happened in 1948 when this, this generation came into Israel. Nine, uh, 2018 would have been 70 years. And as a matter of fact, 2018, Jerusalem was declared the capital by Donald Trump. And it's funny enough that that word is in the Bible when we get raptured, it's at the last Trump. 
I wonder if the Lord has a sense of humor and I, maybe Donald Trump gets elected president and we go up. Who knows? That'd be pretty cool. But uh, anyways, you, you get the picture here. God does not work in coincidences. Recap. From Adam to Abraham was 1948 years. That was before Christ, way before Christ. And then after Christ, 1948 years, Israel became a nation again, as the Bible had predicted, had prophesied, not predicted, prophesied. It was going to happen, which again is in the year 5708 in the Jewish calendar. The 5708 verse pro prophesies that event. Jesus Christ speaks about this generation and says, this generation will see these things happen. And then, lo and behold, 70 to 80 years after 1948, we're seeing all these things happening right before our eyes, exactly as the Bible says it. The LGBT community, community, quote unquote, I don't like to even call it a community, is wreaking havoc on the political system, okay? This is not coincidence, this is biblical, People that want to say it's not biblical, maybe you should open up the Bible and read it for yourselves. The, the Lord makes it very clear that uh, sodomy is an abomination. The sodomites were an abomination to the Lord. And in today's day and age, we are living in what is very similar to the days of Noah and Lot when there was judgments. <clears throat> if you go back and study what it was like in the days of Noah and Lot, it was filled with violence and sexual immorality exactly what we see today guys exactly what we see today so this is none of this is coincidence study this stuff for yourself keep watching this video and check it out do the math all this points to one thing to me man that rapture must be soon and thank you lord get us out of here